Well, hello everyone. We're supposed to start, and uh, this lecture will be loaded on uh, YouTube, and I'll send you the link to this. So that's why even those who late in, so they have an opportunity to observe this lecture later on my YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, if you have any contacts with the first uh, and second and fourth group, so please uh, send the link to because uh, I'm not added to this uh, to this WhatsApp groups. Okay. Can you hear? Uh, can you hear me clearly? No? Yes. Sir. Okay. So during the lecture you can interrupt me, you can uh, ask for um, some uh, corrections, some, uh, uh, some ask some questions, uh, I will uh, clarify this to you, so that's, uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, let's start. So, uh, let's start with the overview of the nucleus. Uh, it's a membrane-limited compartment, so you heard about it. Uh, so it contains genome, uh, uh, so in eukaryotic cells. Uh, so eukaryotic cells, uh, just a reminder, so we have prokaryotic cells, uh, which are bacteria and uh, um, green, blue, um, arcase, yeah. So that's, uh, we, uh, we are talking about eukaryotic cells. We are eukaryotic cells, that's why we will concentrate our attention on the nucleus. Uh, so, nucleus contains genetic information, uh, so with the machinery of DNA replication, RNA transcription and processing. So, that's, uh, you should be sure that uh, um, the nucleus is not just a container, uh, it's also a very active part of the uh, human cell. Uh, nucleus uh, non uh, of a non-divided cell, also called an interface cell, consists of the following components. So, uh, that's, um, okay. Let's stop reading from the uh, part, this part. So let's discuss uh, the containing of this. Okay, so I'm going to uh, Contained uh, of the nucleus. So nucleus is double enveloped membrane. Yeah, so we have a double enveloped membrane. Uh, so and here you see it's double enveloped membrane. But actually, uh, we uh, in reality we don't have a nucleus like. Uh, nucleus membrane like distinct structure. No, nucleus membrane, nucleus envelope is uh, very tightly bound with the endoplasm reticulum, uh, spe specifically uh, rough endoplasm reticulum, yes, yeah? so because uh, here we see. Actually, uh, we can claim it's that uh, endoplasmic reticulum um, forming the nuclear envelope. And, uh, and we have also nuclear pores, pores uh, which can uh, connect the uh, cytoplasm with the uh, nuclear component. Uh, so, nuclear component composed of chromatin, and this one is known as a nucleolus. So, chromatin, uh, <coughs> we have two types of chromatin. <coughs> sorry, it's a nuclear, uh, so eochromatin, so sorry, in the middle we have eochromatin, and uh, by the border we have a uh, hydrochromatin. So, difference between these two chromatins are, uh, so, might be... Yeah, okay, later we'll discuss it. Uh, so, the differences between this chromatin is that uh, eochromatin is active part of uh, DNA. So, this active part so is uh, used for replication, is used for, uh, so, no, uh, for RNA synthesis, is used for uh, making this uh, role of this cell exactly. Because we have a lot of genes, we have a lot of uh, um, genetic material in every cell, but uh, used only the few genes for the uh, metabolic activity of the cell. So that's why I just um, want you to mention uh, that it is not, uh, so that not all the genetic material is used in one cell. Okay, and uh, nuclear envelopes are playing a role just to distinct this, uh, the genetic material from the rest of uh, human body, oh, so from the rest of uh, cellular body, sorry. And uh, also it plays, uh, it uses as a connection to the rough endoplasm reticulum. Because, you know, one of the function of the nucleus, uh, you know it from school, is a, is a formation of uh, ribosomes in one hand. In other hand, it plays a role in uh, tr uh, uh, translation of the translation information. Yeah? So uh, RNA, which is uh, produced in the nucleus, it is uh, transported to the rough endoplasm reticulum 
for uh, protein synthesis. So an actually outer uh, part of the nuclear envelope playing role of the uh, of the rough and abundant reticulum. So uh, also responsible for protein synthesis. So sorry, some something in the chat. Samir Alam, you wanted to ask something? Or? Okay. Okay. Uh, this is uh, uh, electron micrography. Uh, so the nucleus. So we, you see, it's a rough and pleasant reticulum. These bubbles are uh, ribosomes. The ribosomes, which making it like rough and plastic reticulum, and outer uh, nuclear envelope. Again, it's uh, uh, it is a continuation of rough and plasma reticulum, and synthesis of proteins goes inside. Actually, ribosomes, uh, which are present in rough and plasma reticulum, were produced inside the nucleus, and uh, with the help of nucleolus. So, nucleolus producing the uh, producing the major part of ribosome. So chromatin, uh, so we have a uh, uh, so chromatin is decondensed. So that, that uh, I have I want you to differentiate the principle, so difference between chromosome and chromatin. So now let's talk about this. Um, so chromosome is condensed part, and it is uh, it is visible only during the cell division, only during the mitosis and meiosis. So they they are uh, cr they are in the shape of chromosome. This gen all the genetic material, uh, but uh, but actually, um, sorry, uh, but actually, uh, chromatin, chromatin part is uh, that uh, which is decondensed. So here it's visible. So in a casual life of the cell, so which we name as G1, S, and G2 phase, uh, so it is looks like euchromatin, less condensed part and euchromatin, which is very condensed part of DNA. And obviously, so if I have a, a very condensed part of DNA, so it is not, um, it is not used for, um, uh, for pro, uh, RNA synthesis. It's condensed, yeah, it's uh, like um, packed, you know, packed one. And euchromatin, uh, euchromatin is unpacked one, so which is used for, uh, it which is used for metabolic role. Okay. Uh, so, and we have a uh, chromatin chromosomes. Okay, let's uh, let's look forward. So uh, actually, in case of uh, in case of uh, chromosome, mm, uh, so in case of chromosome which is condensed one, it is divided into centromere and uh, and telomeres. Yeah, telomeres. So then uh, later we'll discuss a little more details. So what is the composition of chromatin? Chromatin fiber with the loops of chromatin fibril anchored to a chromosome scaffold. So we have a chromosome scaffold. It is playing not uh, just a base, uh, not like a base of this uh, chromosome, but also as a, uh, but also as a uh, promoter part. So which this uh, influence on this of the different hormones influence of this uh, by uh, different chemical secondary uh, signaling systems will differentiate uh, will um, define the uh, which part of gene will actively work which part of the genetic information will acti will be activated so and uh, let's talk about chromatin fibril chromatin fibril is composed of the condensed uh, condensed uh, structure structures named as nucleosomes nucleosomes are the okay this is dna blue one is the dna and uh, uh, which is wrapped around the histone protein histone protein so that's uh, and this uh, histone protein uh, so uh, two and half uh, wraps in uh, around one histone protein we have and actually also they are playing a role very huge role in regulation of the uh, in in the regulation of the uh, dna uh, rna synthesis and actually here out of your side of you so we have an unfolded Ah, so it's it's a side of you, but in a video it won't be present. It's a DNA. So you you know about this double uh, string of DNA, which is present. Okay, no need to learn by heart this uh, sizes. Just it's for your ima imagination. So how you imagine the sizes in uh, real life? 
Okay. Then we have using the range. So that's uh, in a PDF uh, which I'm gonna send to you, so you can uh, read this in, uh, this information. Okay, chromosomes. Uh, so uh, during the mitotic division, chromatin fibers formed by chromatin loop domains uh, attached to a flexible protein scaffold undergo condensation to form chromosomes. So uh, we uh, so and I showed it to you. Uh, chromatids. Cell cycle. Okay. Uh, we uh, we have to discuss uh, structure of chromosome. So uh, this is chromosome, and it is chromosome after the division. This is central mirror. Uh, central parts so actually playing the role. Uh, so in, in it's uh, famous because of its containing kinetic cores. So especially in this kinetic cores, which um, helping uh, to attach the. Uh, help in attaching the uh, microtubules uh, for cell division. For cell division, so they are kind of course present. And in a structure of chromosome, uh, we can uh, see the short arms and long arms. And together they are named as telomeres. So every of this part is named as telomeres. And by shape, we subdivide all the chromosomes into metacentric. Submetacentric, acrocentric, and telocentric. So it's a morphology of the chromosome. It is not affecting the function of this chromosome. It's uh, natural just for chromosomal an analysis. So just uh, during the um, defining the chromosomal uh, any chromosomal disorders or something. And so we have to uh, we have to find the exact chromosome by its shape, shape and size. Okay, telomere. They are located at each end of the chromosome. It's called the telomere. So we discussed it. So and uh, yeah, so yeah, one thing. So most of chromosomes are uh, so most of pairs of chromosome are equal. So all of them are equal. Besides, so only one pair. It's twenty third pair. And twenty third pair, we have uh, structures like this. Yeah. So in um, in females. X and X chromosomes are equal, but in males we have X and Y chromosome, which is di uh, and Y chromosome one of the smallest chromosomes. So you just compare it with 20, uh, 22nd, 21, 20, 20 approximately the same as they, but if we, it's incomparable by size with uh, with other chromosomes, even with the X chromosome. That's why uh, which making the Y chromosome one of the smallest chromosome and. Uh, a little amount of genes are localized there, so and later we'll discuss it. Uh, SRY gene is the uh, is the main uh, gene which is loca localized uh, in Y chromosome. Um, yeah, but X chromosome is present in males and females. So again, I I think you heard about it, but just for instance, uh, so double X, two X chromosomes. It's a female if, uh, genotype, uh, XY, uh, it's a male genotype. But other chromosomes are absolutely similar. Okay. As a result of meiosis, X and sperm have only 23 chromosomes, which is known as haploid number. Mm, uh, so as well as a haploid number, amount of DNA. Somatic chromosomes number 2N, so means a diploid uh, amount of DNA uh, re-established fertilization by the fusion of the sperm nucleus with the egg and nucleus. Okay, nucleolus. So what uh, what we have to say about nucleolus? The function of uh, nucleolus is a um, primary site of ribosomal production and assembly. So uh, RNA uh, is synthesized inside the nucleus. Now nucleolus is just a site where uh, assembling uh, of these uh, proteins and uh, RNA goes on. And as we discussed in the last lecture, so. Um, uh, what is the structurally uh, ribosome is? It's a um, protein uh, with attached to these ribosomes and together assembled uh, um, organelle is responsible for protein synthesis. Okay, so this is uh, nucleolus had three morphological distinct regions, so that's no need to remember actually. Uh -huh. Fibrillar centers uh, contain DNA loops of five different chromosomes 13, 14, 15, 21, and 22, so, uh, which are responsible for rRNA synthesis. Okay. Mm. 
So there, um, and uh, that's explaining its role. Yes, yeah? so the RNA um, genes are present here, and for synthesis of RNA, we need a uh, DNA, and it's uh, parts of 13, 14, 15, and 21st and 22nd chromosomes are present there. And uh, fibrillar, fibrillar material, material it contains resomal genes that are actively undergoing transcription and large amounts of RNA. And granular material represents the site of initial ribosomal assembly and contains densely packed uh, preribosomal particles. Is that the structure? Yeah. Okay. Nuclear envelope. Uh, so we have uh, outer nuclear envelope and the inner nuclear envelope. Mm, so um, well we have a <coughs> and in between them we have a connections as I sh shown you before. So which are named as a nuclear pores. So mediate the active transport of uh, proteins, ribonucleic proteins, and RNAs between the nucleus and cytoplasm. Membranes of the nuclear envelope differ in structure and functions. Okay, one second. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, any questions on this point? No, no questions. Let's continue. Outer nuclear membrane uh, closely resembles the membrane of the plasma reticulum and, uh, in fact, continues with a rough plasma reticulum membrane, as I said in the beginning. And inner nuclear membrane is supported by a rigid network of intermediate protein. Mm. Intermediate protein filament, sorry, uh, attached to its inner surface called the nuclear fibrous lamina. So it's like cytoskeleton of the nucleus. And the, then its connection. Uh, and here we have a pores, nuclear pore complex. So that's uh, it's not just holes inside, but actually it's uh, assembled by uh, proteins and uh, which uh, regulate the uh, transportation of ribosomes and uh, rRNA outside and uh, consumption of different uh, components by the DNA. And this is perinuclear space. Actually, it's an innate space of rough and plasma particulum, which is very, very tightly uh, bound with this space. Actually, it's the same milieu here. Nuclear pores, okay. Actually, we discussed it. Uh, during cell division, the nuclear envelope is disassembled uh, to allow chromosome separation and later reassembled as a daughter cell forms. Okay, nuclear plasm. Uh, so, uh, let's uh, talk to you what is nuclear plasm. Actually, nuclear plasm is, uh, um, is a cytoplasm of nucleus. So it, contains, uh, uh, it, it contains chromatin. Of course, the main component is the chromatin, but, uh, but we have a fluid here. So, a fluid which is containing... Uh, uh, nucleotides, so of course, so which we use for uh, further synthesis of DNA and RNA. Uh, so also we have a lot of enzymes uh, there, so which are responsible for replication, uh, which are responsible for uh, transcription uh, uh, mechanisms, yeah, for RNA synthesis uh, and uh, processing machinery itself. Yes, as shown here, processing machinery itself. So because RNA, when it's synthesized, actually it's not a, uh, so it's synthesized and not do, don't, doesn't go directly to the uh, ribosomes. Actually, it's also persist. So then uh, some parts are, which are loops are useless loops uh, are proceeded. So actually it's, it will play a very huge role in the process of pathogenesis of different disorders. And there's deletions, uh, for example, some parts of DNA, so you know that we have genetic mutations. So, uh, and some uh, some nucleotides might be deleted, and we claim oh one one uh, G, uh, one chromatide is so sorry one um, nucleotide is deleted, and then all the uh, transcription site is just uh, failed. Yeah, actually not. Actually, uh, we have mechanisms, protective mechanism against uh, gen genetic mutation. Uh, that even we have genetic mutations. So, but um, due to we have some useless parts of this RNA, we can. Uh, just uh, uh, process them, uh, process them, and then uh, we, we have it. Uh, even if gene is uh, damaged, so we don't mention it, and uh, it doesn't reflect the um, the function of the cell. Okay, that's about nucleus. Um, now I want to talk to you about cell division. <coughs> the second part of our lecture.
cellular production, cell cycle, mitosis, and meiosis. So, um, the cell renewal. So, th then first of all, we have to start with the process of cell renewal. So, in, uh, it's sometimes it's a bummer fact for the students so that um, you know, we have different cell populations. Uh, some cell populations which are uh, constantly dividing, but some cells which are established once and never dividing again, uh, but with some exceptions. So, and le let's talk about this. Static cell populations. Static cell populations are those cells uh, which are produced before. Uh, so produced before ahead and uh, then it's not they're not renovating. So that's um, uh, why uh, why this happens. So th these cells are very specialized. Their cytoplasm is very well organized. Now their uh, uh, their features are yeah uh, their features are so specific that it's uh, mitotic division is a destruction of all the cytoplasmic components yeah you remember it um, so but if we have uh, opportunity to save it so and we just uh, sacrificing the opportunity for cell division we do this uh, it's typical for my uh, muscle cells it's typical for cardiomyocytes it's typical for nervous tissue uh, and uh, and then some uh, some cell populations are actually retired cells, a cell population. In uh, next semester we'll discuss it. Uh, it's uh, for example chondrocytes, and so we actually um, or osteocytes, so cells which are finished their uh, replicative uh, uh, state uh, and they finish their um, opportunity for cell division because they are lacking of uh, nutrition. And uh, so, and this is static cell population, and they should be static, so they shouldn't divide, divide. And um, but actually, that's why injury of the brain, uh, so injury of the muscles, uh, uh, so infarction, heart infarction. So is they're not recovering, so because it's uh, easy to say, yeah. So it's a cells, uh, the cells has a cell division. So why don't we? Why can't we replicate them? Uh, but actually, in uh, in reality, in static cell populations, uh, sp uh, in case of cardiomyocytes, ex uh, actually we have some studies which show that recovery of uh, myocardial cells might happen with the help of stem cell therapy. So it's uh, it has not enough uh, proven proof in data, you know, but uh, but results of some studies are very very. Mm, uh, hopefully, so th they will they will be corrected. Uh, okay, then we can recover static cell population only by uh, stem cell uh, stem cell ter therapy. Uh, so, you know, for example, also uh, we uh, in uh, one of the recent study shown that uh, even neurons, some of neurons, some parts of neurons are uh, mitotically active. Uh, what it depends on, we're not sure. So, uh, but. Um, uh, but these divisions are like uh, seven cells per day, for example. Yeah, so it's nothing. It's nothing in the frame of uh, size of the brain and the amount of cells in the brain. But still, some uh, neurons are uh, recovering. Okay, we have a stable cell population. So a stable cell population. Uh, so then, then uh, they are dividing. Uh, so sometimes. So, so when it's required. So, in, just in case of some injury or in case of uh, functional inactivity of this organ, yeah. Uh, for example, yeah. So here, she, uh, given the examples of uh, periosteal and perichondrial cells, so smooth muscle cells, endothelial cells, blood vessels, fibroblasts, connective tissue. So because uh, because they are dividing only in case uh, we need to grow, we need to recover, uh, we need uh, some specific stimuli for their growing. So without the specific stimuli, they are. Um, uh, they are not active, uh, and one of the best example, as I have, uh, so as for me, it's uh, um, for example liver cells. So liver cell uh, hepatocytes, hepatocytes are also known as liver cells. They are uh, recovering during the transplantation. For example, you're a donor, yeah. So and you transplanted the part of your uh, liver to the you know, to the acceptor, and uh, and this. Um, uh, and uh, hepatocytes of our of your liver, so after the uh, transplantations, are recovering, and by size liver uh, returning to the normal state. So it doesn't mean that we can uh, grow up the lobe of the liver, which were uh, in cyst. 
No, uh, actually, mm, we, we, we can say only that by, by size and by features, by function, uh, liver function recovering by this, um, uh, by this mechanism. Okay, uh, it's a uh, stable cell population, but uh, size or uh, amount of the cells should be normal. And uh, it's stimulated, stable cell populations uh, should be recovered only by specific stimuli. And in pathology, we'll discuss a lot of this uh, stable cell population and a lot of uh, stimuli which are leading to their proliferation. Renewing cell populations. So, this um, renewing cell populations are divided into slowly renewing populations and rapidly renewing populations. So, uh, slowly renewing populations are the um, uh, so include smooth muscle cells of most hollow organs. Actually, epithelial uh, ah rapidly, it's rapidly fibroblast of the uterine wall and epithelial cells of the lens of the eye. So they um, uh, they they constantly renew. They constantly changing uh, changing. But uh, but uh, speed ra uh, rapidness of this should be not very large because of its slow injury. Uh, so they uh, they don't recover with a uh, very rapid injury. So but time to time the the senescence is collecting in the cells and slowly renewing uh, go, uh, goes on in the cells. Uh, but uh, most interesting for us, uh, especially in frame of cancer, is this population, it's rapidly renewing populations. It's uh, blood cells, epithelial cells, and dermal fibroblasts uh, of the skin. Epithelial cells is epithelial fibroblasts of the mucosal lining of the elementary tract. But actually all the, uh, all the uh, mucosal epithelial cells are very rapidly renewing. So of course, why it happens? Uh, because because of its uh, genetic role. Genetically, this uh, g uh, rapidly renewing populations they are uh, they can be senescent very rapidly, uh, and they, uh, and they uh, uh, might be their function uh, to be used. And so, as example, RBCs, red blood cells, uh, they are produced and without opportunity to recover themselves, uh, they are sent into the bloodstream. And of course, uh, throughout the life of the cells, they are uh, they're getting senescent, membrane getting less um, elastic, and membrane getting less, um, so may more fragile, and it's rupturing, so in uh, approximately 120 days, right, RBCs are leaving, yeah, and that's why, um, so 1% of uh, all the erythrocytes are dying every single day, and we need to recover it with the same amount, so with the same 1% of uh, 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 erythrocytes. So that's why. You know, that's why this. Uh, re uh, uh, that's why bone marrow is a rapidly, rapidly renewing population. Also, the, the similar we can say about epithelial lining of the um, uh, gastrointestinal tract. Uh, we in, uh, we encounter with a lot of um, some toxicants. Uh, we encounter with the food. Yes, yeah, so which is physical property. It's uh, food. Uh, so which wipe out the uh, layers of uh, epithelial cells, and we have to recover them all, all the time. For example, uh, epidermis of skin. So skin. Uh, so the main function of skin is uh, to divide, uh, so to in insulate our body from out environment, and we doing uh, doing it by uh, production of the um, uh, lifeless layer. So that's uh, epidermis of skin. The upper layer of the epidermis of skin. It's a uh, um, it's, pre uh, it's composed of dead cells. Dead cells and corpses of the cells are present uh, or around our body and prevent any um, uh, so and prevent a lot of bad uh, influences to our body. Uh, so okay, later in uh, next semester we'll discuss uh, the in details about the skin and features. Okay. So the, and of course this population is the first and the main um, uh, main co main cause of the cancer. So the, they are growing predominantly out of this population. So these other populations are really rarely affected by uh, cancer. Cell cycle. So uh, cell cycle. So will better to be uh, explained by this diagram. So this M is a mitosis or my, my, okay mitosis in this case, and we have G1. G1 it's a growth phase. So G1 it's a, a growing phase. So in which uh, in which we just uh, in which the cell after cell division, cell division it gets only half of the only half of its uh, cytoplasm content. 
and uh, we need to grow it up to produce more, more mitochondria to produce more ribosomes uh, to produce more membranes to produce uh, rafnoblasm reticulum I don't know so any of the uh, so cytoskeleton even so that's uh, that's a very um, uh, objective situation yeah when we need G1 phase and it's the largest phase of the cell cycle and predominantly if we talk in, if we look at the cell and uh, we can ask so which phase is it so we can uh, easily answer G1 so most commonly it will be G1 phase only in a few uh, exceptions we have a SG2 phase or mitosis and it's visible and, um, and some of the cells which we discussed below so like static cell populations and even most of the stable cell populations they are resting in G0 phase G0 phase and uh, G0 phase it's uh, when a cell mm, is resting in this position and st uh, and uh, uh, and this is GTD, I don't remember what the, exactly the name so when it's losing the opportunity for cell division for example this um, uh, a cell which containing the fat droplet uh, so this is adipocyte of course cytoplasm of this cell is, re uh, is uh, filled with the uh, fat and uh, of course it's impossible to uh, permit this uh, cell division so typical mitotic cell division because uh, the rearrangement of cytoplasm is uh, impossible now that's why we can uh, claim that uh, fat tissue fat cells adipocytes uh, they are um, uh, they are uh, impossible for cell division so that's why amount of fat cells is not multiplying so it's uh, multiplying uh, so uh, but size of the fat cells are multiplying and the similar phases we have in um, in uh, muscles, uh, skeletal muscle cells, cardiomyocytes, uh, because yeah, they are very well organized, and also into the neurons because uh, because of very high organization of the cells, and they are impossible for cell division. But as in uh, in a static cell, a stable cell population, which uh, so rest in this space for a long time, but then we have some influencing stimuli. So G0 phase can convert back into G1 phase. This is why predominance of cells, so despite what is written here, so 9, 12 hours here, 7.5, 10 hours here, but sometimes this G1 phase is prolonged to G0 G phase, and uh, then returning back. That's why we can uh, virtually say that G1 phase is way, uh, the longest phase in our body. Okay, next phase is the S phase. S phase is of course uh, uh, is of course a DNA replication uh, mechanism. So it's um, so you remember the structure eochromatin and chromatin uh, in uh, heterochromatin. Actually, in S phase, it's like rolling out uh, step by step every DNA um, every DNA um, thread there, and uh, we divide this every DNA, DNA thread and uh, build up a new DNA. Uh, on uh, on its uh, frame. So okay, actually, some mechanism, if I'm not mistaken, is explained. If not, in biochemistry we'll discuss it uh, in more details. Uh, so then, uh, division of cell, uh, division of uh, DNA happening in frame of nucleus. So nucleus is uh, still in cysteine side. Um, uh, so and then uh, here we have a doubling of DNA. So now and after S phase we have a double DNA content. Uh, okay. And then, uh, and then G2 phase, it's a uh, final preparations for mitosis. So it's a formation of the, uh, telomeres, it's a formation of uh, cytoskeleton, uh, microtubules, uh, so uh, co uh, containing so everything, uh, everything which is uh, responsible for preparation for mitosis. And finally, mitosis. So. Uh, so what is mitosis? Uh, details of mitosis you discussed in school, I sure so. But uh, later I'll remind you. But uh, I want to uh, uh, p uh, pay your attention to these parts. They are named as checkpoints. 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 Yeah. So what uh, what is the function of these checkpoints? For example, in G1 phase, we have a, a DNA damage checkpoint. So that's uh, you see. If uh, why we need the checkpoints? It's uh, to restrict the growth of the population of cells which collected a lot of genetic mistakes. If cells can uh, collecting a lot of genetic mistakes and um, keep growing, so it's a direct pathway toward the death, uh, toward the um, uh, toward the cancer. 
so because everything should work as it should working so if uh, if something works not well so then yeah we need to kill the cell and actually cell is the killing itself actually committing suicide if uh, if cell is figuring out that uh, they behave wrong and g1 phase okay uh, wh what means uh, g1 dna damage checkpoint so wh how it goes actually it happens during the um, transcription process so when we uh, check the dna so for rna synthesis and it's producing uh, how's it, an uh, incorrect uh, rna uh, in incorrect R uh, incorrect rna so mitochondrial rna so which uh, uh, sorry uh, matrix rna or information rna so it, 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 it if it's produced incorrect so then uh, then cell commits suicide we have a specific gene tp53 uh, so which uh, checking the cover uh, uh, checking the any changes in DNA and if this amount of changes are very high so then we uh, then cell committing suicide if it's a minor injury of the DNA or for example e mutation useless uh, parts of the DNA uh, uh, so it it tries to recover it so it tries to recover it to the normal state and another uh, another uh, checkpoint which we have uh, in G1 phase actually it's uh, uh, not shown here. It's uh, uh, when we uh, when proteins are synthesized. So because the main reflection of the DNA content is the uh, proteins which are synthesized here. And if uh, proteins uh, which are synthesizing by wrong DNA, so or will be also wrong, right? And uh, that's uh, and they uh, this wrong proteins are also known as uh, misfolding proteins because these proteins are cannot be properly produced. And so they, they can't properly be used in, by our cells and they are like waste uh, inside the cell and uh, possession of the large amount of this misfold proteins it activates the mechanism of uh, programmed cell death known as apoptosis apoptosis so might be heard of something about it uh, but uh, in more details we'll discuss it in pathology of the first semester so in third semester you'll we'll discuss it in details but just uh, for instance, you have to know about this, so that uh, misfolded proteins uh, will cause the apoptosis. Then we have restriction checkpoint. So, and of course, uh, the largest checkpoint is the uh, DNA damage checkpoint. So during the replication, uh, so all the mistakes which are possible you know, for uh, for DNA will be happen in uh, in uh, uh, S phase because DNA uh, is dividing. So and uh, we uh, we see the DNA uh, one by one every uh, step by step and if there are some deletions if there are some uh, um, uh, uh, changes yes yeah, so or the additional uh, dna's or dna is attached to this so we can easily check it out and if uh, a lot of uh, mistakes were collected again cell committing su uh, suicide uh, then uh, unreplicated DNA checkpoint. So then, uh, when uh, some part of DNA were, was not replicated, so it's uh, so must be mistakes are collected inside, and cell is dying. And, and G2 DNA damage checkpoint. So in G2 activated different proteins, different protein synthesis models than in G1. So because we need to produce, as I said, microtubules, uh, actin filaments, uh, so cytoskeleton components, yeah. Uh, so more mitochondria, so uh, and uh, uh, centromeres are produced, uh, centrosomes are produced uh, or telomeres. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the, uh, and this uh, DNA. Uh, so and we see this DNA um, in G1. We didn't see the genes, but then uh, G2 DNA damage checkpoint is similar to G1 DNA damage checkpoint. So we see it by result, you know, or we d see it during the transcription. Okay, and later after G2 inevitably starts the mitosis, but we have a checkpoint here also. It's a spindle assembly checkpoint, so that's um, you know, spindle fibers uh, which are formed. Uh, so if uh, they are not attaching here, okay, cell die. And chromosome segregation checkpoint. So if uh, if chromosomes are not deleted properly, so not uh, uh, pulled to the opposite sides, it's uh, it also will lead to death. Okay. So uh, is all, is everything understandable now? So might be some uh, details. I guess it, it's a tough part of discussion. If you have any questions, you can ask. No questions, I guess. Okay. So, but they should be there. Uh, okay. 
in details we discussed this this uh, lecture so in PDF again I'll send to you uh, so now I want to face you the regulation of the cell cycle how cell cycle is regulated so what we um, <coughs> uh, what we have inside so of course uh, two protein complex uh, so this CDK is a plain uh, uh, plain proceed the cell uh, cell cycle regulation, and it's a uh, CDK. Uh, it's a cycle independent kinase, kinase has power the cells uh, through the checkpoints of cell cycle division. Uh, so that's if we have uh, some uh, mistakes uh, during this uh, during this division. So this cell cycle uh, cycle independent kinase actually will stop the process of uh, pa uh, passage out. Uh, so, cell cycle uh, of uh, every cell is regulated um, also by hormones. For example, a typical example, so as well as neurologist, uh, so it's uh, benign prostate hyperplasia. Uh, so, um, benign prostate hyperplasia is regulated by, um, oh, okay, no, uh, prostate cancer. Okay, that's a better example. Prostate cancer, for example, so that's, uh, they are hormone dependent. Now they are depending on testosterone level. And if the strong level will remain high, so in case of prostate cancer, the progression of this prostate cancer will be very high. But if we stop uh, uh, production of testosterone in the patient, so then uh, cells of prostate cancer are gradually dying, and the uh, size of prostate cancer is not increasing, and it's uh, and it's reached by um, chemotherapy or by orchidectomy, so removal of the testes. So uh, if we remove the testes, so nothing produces testosterone, and then prostate cancer uh, decreases in its <coughs> significance. But yeah, of course, some um, it's a very uh, rough explanation, but still uh, kind of explain the point. So, uh, so uh, the reserve stem cell population uh, may become activated and re-enter the cell cycle. So you remember I said we have a a uh, stable cell population. So uh, this uh, cell population, which uh, main function is to waiting for uh, for the sign. The, uh, and for example, any sign coming. So for example, just imagine this uh, active cells which are standing near each other. So they have a very uh, tight connection to each other. And one cell is dying. So and the neighboring cell feeling it. And what is the main task of the cell? Of course, it uh, is uh, to commit uh, mitosis. So then, uh, and divide and place this uh, empty space because uh, the main function of uh, most of the cells is uh, to keep the integrity. And we, we have to produce one more cell, uh, so na neighboring cell, to prevent the uh, any leakages. Okay. So this is uh, mechanism of cycling. So actually, it's. Uh, it's very important in a frame of uh, chemotherapy, but uh, I guess uh, even the previous information is uh, tough for you. If you're interested, so I uh, sent you the book um, the, uh, with the detailed information about this. So what is a cyclin D, CDK4, uh, uh, 6, cyclin E, CDK2, cyclin A, CDK2, and cyclin A, CDK1. So that's. Uh, uh, they are uh, helping in the uh, checkpoints passage here yeah, and uh, also helping in uh, committing on suicide uh, in uh, during the cell cycle okay finally mitosis uh, so mitosis in the uh, happens in them phase we discussed it mitosis nearly always includes both karyokinases division of the nucleus and cytokinases and division of the cell in some books, uh, cytokinesis is, is out of mitosis and it's claimed like um, interface, so that's a G1 phase, it's like already G1 phase, but uh, actually I guess uh, if we talk about mitosis as a cell division, so let's name cytokinesis also as a cell division. Uh, so, uh, and phase possess two checkpoints, spindle assembly checkpoint, uh, which prevents premature entry into an phase, and the chromosome segregation checkpoint, which prevents the process of cytokinesis until all of the chromosomes have been correctly separated. Okay, and that we discussed before. Um, mm -hmm. So 
this information we discussed okay uh, so we have um, four phases pro phase meta phase and a phase still a phase uh, I hope all of you remember yeah these phases but some little little details let's provide so uh, here's written it might just follow the s phase of the cell cycle uh, so actually it's following the g2 phase we recently we discussed but uh, s phase uh, is just plain role uh, uh, s phase is a plain role in a, uh, in a replication of dna uh, and uh, prophase metaphase and aphase and telophase is used for uh, segregation of this uh, proteins uh, segregation of this dna uh, into two different cells okay Prophase begins as the, as the replicated chromosomes can dance and become visible. Uh, so, and uh, sister chromatids are held together by the ring of proteins called cohesins. Uh, so, as name implies, cohesion. Yes, yeah, so let's uh, uh, bind them together, uh, and and also bond with the centromere. Uh, so, in a, in a late prophase or prometaphase. Um, so we have a, a separate phase of mitosis. The nuclear envelope begins to disintegrate to small transport with zygotes and resembles the uh, smooth and the plasma reticulum. So, okay, let's show it. So we actually uh, don't play this uh, information. Uh, early prophase. So what is going on in early prophase? The main feature of what is going on in early prophase is the condensation of chromosomes. So you see this uh, double horn structure of the chromosomes is uh, uh, is uh, explaining explained by formation of two sister chromatids, two sister chromatids. So that's why the, uh, this part halves of the chromosomes are absolutely uh, um, identical, or not absolutely because of some mutations uh, possible, but in general they are identical. So that's why they are named as sister chromatids. And each chromosome in early prophase and uh, in the rest of uh, uh, mitosis cycle, uh, the sister chromatids are equal. Yeah, and and the main task of the um, mitosis is actually separation of the sister chromatids. So, um, and also uh, in early prophase, so what is happening? So it's uh, placing of the centrioles on the opposite sides of the cell. And nuclear envelope gradually starts to disappear, but actually, it uh, this process finishes in the late prophase. So you see what uh, what also uh, happening here. So it also also happening the mating of this uh, uh, mating of the um, chromosomes, pairs of chromosomes. So you see, pairs of chromosomes are present nearby. So this is from father, this is from mother, for example. Yeah, now they are uh, they are not equal, they are an uh, analogic. Uh, so, but they are not uh, totally equal, and that's uh, and they bond together. Uh, so uh, and uh, uh, and also uh, centrioles, or uh, or also as we discussed in previous uh, lecture, it's a uh, uh, microtubule organization center, MTOC. So uh, they are uh, they are uh, assembled uh, mm, placed on the opposite sides, and microtubules are organized. So starting this organization in a late prophase, and also a late prophase is named as prometaphase. So, and in metaphase, process of disintegration of a nuclear envelope, disappearing of nuclear envelope uh, finishes, and then microtubules are attached to the centromeres, cen centromeres of the uh, chromosomes. So here it's shown not very correctly actually. So. Um, in um, uh, in mitosis, uh, this uh, tubules are so two tubules attached to the same centromere. So and uh, from each um, microtubule organizing center, so attached to the same centromere. And in uh, in uh, anaphase, actually separation of this uh, separation of this uh, two uh, uh, chromatids taking place. So also, it's incorrect. Oh. Probably this diagram, but by mistake, uh, I put the diagram of the first meiotic division. But actually, it's uh, I plan to show first meiotic division. Yeah. So, but this diagram, okay. Uh, you, all of you, has this opportunity to see. Sorry, someone tried to join.
Okay. Anyway. Uh, so in uh, anyway in uh, Anna phase the next division uh, so uh, in the division of the sister committee is goals and they placed on opposite sides so and then contraction of this microtubules go, uh, takes place and uh, and uh, and this uh, chromosomes are organized near the uh, microtubule organizing center also known as the centriole and in the uh, next stage uh, so these chromosomes are organized in uh, with the cell and a uh, nuclear envelope and uh, the and later starts the process known as a telophase. Uh, and telophase is the formation of the nucleus and uh, also splitting of the cell into two parts. Uh, so and this uh, and we can say that prophase, uh, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase it's a karyokinesis. So karyokinesis. Uh, but after this, uh, following the karyokinesis, um, so we have a, a cytokinesis. So that's why we used to, you uh, used to learn it like um, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So that's everything we have in mitosis. But actually, after the uh, telophase, we have a um, we have a cytokinesis. It is also part of the mitosis. So okay, uh, in details, it's shown here. We are discuss it. So meiosis. So meiosis. What's the difference of between meiosis and mitosis? Uh, I hope you heard heard about it. But for instance, uh, in case of in meiosis, we have um, a feature for division of diploid cells into haploid cells. And actually, in meiosis one, the first meiotic division. Uh, so uh, so it's already divided into two haploid cells. Again, first meiotic division. Uh, in first meiotic division we have a haploid cell formation. The features we have in, uh, in, in a meiotic, cell, uh, meiotic division, uh, so it's uh, similar, it's uh, similar there, so that's also my, um, uh, microtubular organizing centers, uh, split to, to opposite sides, nuclear envelope disappears, uh, it's happening in prophase. Then uh, in metaphase, uh, these pairs of chromosomes are aligned you know, on the same um, on the on the equator. Uh, so and the, and the, this cahitins uh, or um, kinetic cores actually are attached with the uh, microtubules, and they pulled on opposite sides. And you see, these pairs of chromosomes are pulled on opposite sides. Uh, so and this uh, two sister chrom where two sister chromatids are present, almost similar, and in anaphase they're uh, they're present on opposite sides, and then then directly after the cytokinesis without um, uh, prof uh, without uh, G1 phase, it directly goes to the second uh, cell division. So this is known as second uh, second meiosis. And this short uh, period of time, so which um, which cannot be named as interface, so that's known as interkinesis. And uh, here we have a splitting of the uh, so, uh, division of this by the same uh, principle: prophase disappearance of the freshly formed nuclear envelope, and then alignment of the uh, chromosomes on the middle plane. Now it's 23 chromosomes. Yeah, uh, here we have uh, 46 chromosomes. Here are 23 chromosomes. And then division of sister chromatids to the opposite sides, and we have a uh, this uh, and we have a four gametes. Gametes are sexual uh, cells uh, which are you know, responsible for uh, which are responsible for cell uh, for the uh, sexual uh, division. Yeah. So and this process process goes on in females only in embryonic period. Uh, or sorry, in a uh, um, fetal period of life, in in males, it, uh, this process takes place uh, only in testes uh, throughout the life. Uh, okay. So, but uh, it's not so easy. It's not so easy as shown here. Especially in prophase one, we have a very crucial changes, and that's uh, prophase one is com composed of these five different phases. It's a leptotin, zygotin, pachytin, diplotin, and diakinesis. So, uh, 
So that's prophase one again. So all uh, so now we discussed entire my meiosis and everything seems very simple, but prophase one is not so simple. So let's uh, take a look again. So what do, uh, what's happening in leptotin? <coughs> Uh, so the, in the early phase uh, of um, in the protein, so we, we have uh, just threads in, of chromosomes. They are like condensing, just condensing chromosomes, uh, and uh, so now just forming the centromeres. And we don't even uh, understand so which chromosome, uh, uh, which chromosome um, is uh, typical. So which chromosomes are how do I? Um, <coughs> <coughs> will form the pair with each other. So, you see, and uh, zygotin, so next phase, when uh, already co uh, concentrated chromosomes, but the concentration process will uh, continue in each of the space, but already a little bit concentrated chromosomes, they form in the pairs of chromosomes. They, for they form pairs of chromosomes and pairing of pairs of chromosomes. So, and, uh, and they form in the synaptonemal complex. And in zygotin, this process of formation of it, and in packetin, it's already formed. <coughs> and in packetin, uh, also uh, starting the basis of the process known as a crossing over. Crossing over uh, is um, uh, exchange of some genetic materials from the uh, from the pair of chromosomes. So why it's so important? So this crossing over, it's a very good, uh, um, very important um, evolutionary ga uh, gain we have uh, in our evolution. So that's uh, by this mechanism, we exchange some genetic material between two different chromosomes, which increases uh, the chances of uh, uh, the chance of not mutation, but um, chances of successful uh, genetic code uh, transmission. So, because we mixing up some genes, so, so then a uh, child will be not as similar as uh, his ancestors. So, and there's a uh, recombination of genes happening. So, and that's why uh, chances that we will, we will produce someone better than uh, previous one. So, that's uh, so it's higher. Uh, but yeah, of course, it increases the risk of genetic mutations, and that's uh, uh, like uh, might be might be unethical to say. Yeah. So that, but we have a situation. Yeah, when uh, some. Uh, so for example, we have uh, a lot of children in the family, but one is obviously better than other. Yeah, so one is obviously more successful than other. Yeah, and uh, it's uh, it's a rude example. Of course, uh, success in life doesn't depend on genes, mm -hmm. but it, uh, but in uh, in millions of years of our evolution, it uh, takes uh, very huge uh, importance. Yeah, in life, uh, genetic uh, components. And some one is uh, more successful, yeah. So not in one family, I mean in general. And of course, uh, more successful uh, species. So we will uh, trans uh, transport uh, so and spread their genes much better, yeah. And uh, <coughs> that's why uh, that's why crossing over uh, is very important. So because we need uh, recombinations for the uh, for the evolutionary uh, changes. Okay. And then uh, in uh, met, uh, so in packetin, and then after packetin we have diplotin. So and then uh, more condensed chromosomes are formed. So you see, centromere, centromere so we're not totally uh, fused here, but now uh, so uh, we have a formation of chiasma. So and uh, this chiasma, so by which uh, <coughs> uh, by which crossing over already um, just uh, finishing in packetin starting the process. And in diplotin, this process finishing and uh, and forming the chiasma, yeah. And in diakinesis, it's a uh, formation of this already uh, ready for um, separation to uh, analogous chromosomes. That are not uh, uh, totally mothers or fathers chromosomes, but they are uh, like um, paired chromosomes. And in metaphase one, these tetrads, so which were formed in packetin, actually, so they are aligned on the center, center of the cell. And now, not sister chromatids, but um, uh, but pairs of these chromosomes, uh, these 23 pairs of chromosomes split to 23 chrom uh, also uh, 23 chromosomes. Uh, it's haploid uh, amount of genes already in, uh, after the first meiotic division. So here again, uh, 
details about the about the space taking place. So, so meta phase one, phase one. So that's as explained. So the difference uh, in the males and female um, reproduction is so in the males and females. I already said it. In the males, uh, this process continues all the life. Uh, so all the reproductive life of the human. Uh, so um, and in the end, we have uh, four equal uh, sperm cells, which are visible here. I can see it by myself. But uh, here are four uh, sp uh, sperm cells. Uh, so from one. Uh, spermatocyte. But in females, uh, oocytes are dividing unequally, so and forming one large oocyte and second polar body. So the, it's named as first polar body and second polar body. Actually, second polar body after the second meiotic division. And uh, only one haploid cell uh, will has a chance uh, for um, uh, for fertilization. But in uh, males, all the four sperm cells that has opportunity to fertilize the ovum. Okay, and that's it uh, about today's lecture. Uh, so these lectures uh, were shared. Uh, these lectures were shared to you. So I hope, uh, and also uh, the record of this lecture will be given to you in uh, YouTube. So, uh, thank you for attendance, see you next time, goodbye.